Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I have a special guest for you today. I have somebody that I've been stalking on Instagram. He puts out a lot of great content and uh, I'm like, man, if I can get this guy to say yes, it will be something. And you know what? He said yes. So let's welcome Antonio Edwards to the show. How you doing, Antonio? I'm great, Michael. I'm, I'm super stoked to be on your podcast today and uh, ready to rock and roll, man. I'm honored to be on, so thank you. Well, 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 do the audience a favor, Antonio. I've stalked you for a while, but why don't you introduce yourself, what you do in this crazy business of real estate, where you're at, you know, all the basic, you know, who you are kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to bore everybody with my, with my boring story, but uh, <laughs> now nah, I'm just messing with you. But um, yeah, so uh, pretty much, man, uh, I reside here in sunny Orlando. Um, it's a beautiful day outside in January as we speak. Um, my business runs, uh, is pretty automated and, um, streamlined in Virginia. So that's where my stopping ground is. That's where my, my personal operation is. My operation runs. I have an office there. I have boots on the ground. I have uh, a couple employees. Uh, and, um, that's the way I built my business. I built my business around my lifestyle. Um, I move, I'm from Virginia, by the way. So that, that's for those of you listening, um, I, I do this virtually, obviously. I understood that market and being, being that I was born and raised in the Virginia area, when I moved here in Orlando in 2012, I still had the edge because I knew the streets. Oh, that's that subdivision. I knew the numbers and the comps, so it wasn't as hard to uh, you know buy. And a lot of my stuff, Michael, I buy sight on the scene because I just know the areas and I kind of think the worst case scenario. Because mm -hmm. I'm doing online auctions for a lot, of course, for you know, part of pop, half my stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been in this business for 10 years, man. Oh, no, 11 years. It's 2020 now, right? Wow. 2020? Yeah. Yeah. Two, August 2009 was my first deal. 12500 was a wholesale deal. Prior to that, I had two, $200 in my name, 560 credit score. Um, I'm pretty sure some people that's, that's listening to this podcast, you're watching this, can resonate and relate to that. But I had shit, man. I didn't, I didn't have much. So yeah. um, all I did was, you know, did at the time when Bandit Signs was working for sellers. Now this is a totally different ballgame, totally different market that we're in. Uh, Bandit Signs was like, I mean, there's hardly any investors in the game in 2009, 2010, right? Yeah. So it was hard to Bandit Signs and score one wholesale deal back in those days. And that's what I was doing is I picked up my first deal for 12500 off a set of 100 Bandit Signs. It was a crackhead house, five, uh, five brothers, four crackheads, one sober heir who had power turnover over all the other brothers that lived in the house. I got that property in the contract for 48 grand uh, with, with my mentor at the time. And as soon as we got on the contract, a few hours later, we had a buyer for 60,500. So uh, that was my first deal, 12.5, changed my life. First year I did 26 deals. My first uh, six months, I had my first 100,000 liquid in my bank, which from where I come from, that's a lot of fucking money. Yeah. Uh, and I never turned back. So I was just, you know, from anybody that's watching this or listening to this right now, if you don't have a lot of capital built up into your account, uh, you know, wholesaling it is the way to go. I and mean, that's all, also a tool that you can have, in, you know, in your back. Just always wholesale a deal and make a quick 20 grand if you want to. So yeah. that's always a tool that's, you know, that's in my tool belt and, um, in addition to other tools. and. Um, I'm like Michael. I like, I like rental properties as well. <laughs> so, I mean, fast forward, you know, 11 years later, I, I think I started late with the buying holding side because I was, you know, basically loving the wholesaling, the loving the, the flipping game for a long time. And I woke up one day, I was like, shit, man, I mean, I need to get, I need to get me some buy and hold because I, this ca the cash flow is where it's at. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's not, I mean, you can, I, I spoke with some, some, uh, I, very close with a lot of uh, athletes and I spoke at the pro, pro I had him speak at a Pro Bowl event a couple years ago and uh, none of those guys had cash flow coming in they had a lot of you know I raised I had people raise their hand I was like hey how many people have some cash flow passive income no one raised their hand I was like, how many people have a lot of money in their bank account most of the guys raised their hand it's really wowed me and like like wow like you know it's not about like the millions you have in your savings account it's about how much cash flow Yes, that you can have every month coming in that exceeds your your monthly expenses and your lifestyle. So that's where we at right now. 
<laughs> yeah, I, uh, I love everything about that. Uh, there's so much stuff we get to talk about now just to, just to bring everybody along for the journey. So first and foremost, you know, calling yourself a, uh, starting out as a wholesaler 11 years ago, right? That's early in the game. Band and sites are working. It's obviously evolved a bunch then. Why don't we just kind of walk yeah. people through other things you have done that have worked time, right? From banded signs to mailers to ringless voicemails to texting. Just give kind of people an education on all the different things you've used trying to contact owners slash sellers. Uh, are you talking about in my beginning? Yeah, just, in yeah, just how it how it evolved. Fast right? forward in today. It, but basically go from how it started with yeah. banded signs over your last 11 years. Cause I'm sure you don't just do banded signs today. Yeah, I haven't done banded signs in years and I'm not trying to uh, uh, deflate anybody that still use banded signs today. I just know that's one of the hardest ways to generate a seller lead in today's market. Um, right. So let's take it back to 2009, 2010, 2011. Um, still slow times. There was a lot of investors that went out of business in, in the crash days. So I came in in crash as a newbie, right? And I, I didn't, I wasn't as, uh, I didn't have the fear factor because I'm coming in brand spanking new and that wasn't even on my brain. So I'm just finding these deals on the MLS, Michael, finding deals, I mean, as a wholesaler, as a wholesaler, I'm flipping bank owned properties from, like, from the MLS to, from, to, a, to an investor and he sees it on MLS and he's like, well, still, still a deal, it still works. Yeah. You know, I'm making 10, 15 grand. Just flipping a deal just from the MLS and then obviously banded signs. So those were, my, those were my two main lead generation sources was MLS, which can take any marketing, and banded signs, which I'll, I'll order like a 100, 150 at a time, which was probably about, I put it on my credit card. It was probably about, with stakes and shipping, probably about three to 400 bucks, give or take, mm -hmm. at the time. And I was, I was averaging about one, maybe two deals a month for the first year. And I think a couple of those months I, I scored I did like three deals. That was a lot for me back then. Yeah. I mean, just starting out. And I was like, man, like just, I'm loving this game. I'm liking this thing. And the buyers I was flipping to, they were new cash buyers coming in. Ah. Yeah. So I met these people at the real, they, they were fresh. They had some money in the bank. They're excited. They got the money at the stock market or they just had some money out of IRA. Yeah. They were fresh, just like me. I'm a Fresh wholesaler, it was a fresh cash buyer. Banner sign leads, I'll put them out. I had them go to, uh, actually the first couple months I had to go through my cell phone, which that is a big no-no. That's a huge newbie mistake. Yeah. And I was taking those calls. Uh, so that a couple months later, I got tired of it. I got an answering service, put the answering service number on the banner sign, and they'll retrieve the calls. And uh, yeah, I was probably getting maybe about, maybe about five or six leads. Um, I would say five, no, I'd say about 10 leads a week from okay. a set of hundred band signs, which, which is doable. Yeah. Doable. Um, <clears throat> I was scoring, you know, about two, about two, two deals a month. And um, yeah, I, I, I didn't start my, I didn't start direct mail until probably three years into the game. Okay. I read, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. No, not, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad prior to my first deal, but I read uh, The 4-Hour Work Week ah. in 2011, I believe it was. And he revolutionized me to the, uh, opened me up to the, you know, the, the new way of, you know, how entrepreneurs uh, run their businesses with, you know, you don't need the 4,000 square feet office. You don't need the, feet, cause that's where I was going. That was my, my goal to get the 30 employees, the 40 employees, get this huge office, have this huge corporation. And you know, Michael, we don't, you technically really don't need that in the real estate investing business. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know several, I mean, I'm friends with many guys that buy three, 400 unit buildings, commercial multifamily and, and they they run that stuff from their office man they got two employees you know yeah. <laughs> three employees max but um so then i got into direct mail in 2012 uh um, the, the the four hour work week four hour work week opened me up to just a better uh better way to run your business than like just being in, the, in my business a lot so i did done direct mail i hired my first uh va well, that was incredible. Then I hired a second VA and I was just moving on with that. And uh, then I hired a, um, a acquisitions guy. I didn't, I didn't know it was called acquisitions <laughs> back, back in 2012. I just had a guy just go look out, look, go to my appointments, you know, make my offers. And I was just like, Hey, I was calling my boots on the ground. My field guy, I just call it my field guy. 
boots on the ground. Um, but yeah, so uh, 2013 to 2017, I was, Michael, I was nothing but like online auctions. I was okay. just freaking, I was getting deals trickled in from like marketing here and there or wholesalers because my name was, was was a household name in the Virginia market. So wholesalers send me, send me deals and I'll pick up deals like that. But from the stretch from 13 to 17, I was freaking crushing the online auction game, man. Crushing. Like, it was no competition. Probably picking up about five, six deals a week. I mean, a month. I'm sorry. Not a week. A month. Um, online. And this is zero marketing. This is zero marketing. So wow. for those who had to get five or six deals, I mean, they're probably averaging 10, 15 grand in marketing for the real players that's doing, you know, flip flips. I'm doing zero marketing. Um, at the time, it was home search. Now it's called Zoom, but home search was my number one go-to. Um, <clears throat> Auction.com, HubZoo, Hushin and Marshall, uh, those type of sites. And for, for the type of deals, I mean, I was averaging fifteen grand a deal. Wow. Uh, yeah, twelve to fifteen grand a deal. Zero marketing. Uh, five or six deals on average a month. Uh, on a slow month, maybe like three three deals, but it was still great. And then after 17 hit, I came out, I mean, a business partner came out with the auction flipper. Uh, and we made, we, we did very good and, but it opened up a lot of competition, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it dried up and it slowed up. So, uh, so beginning, so I say around somewhere in eight, 2018, um, year, I had to go back to the basics. So. I already knew about the ringless voicemails of cold calling from masterminds because I always have my ear in the streets and I know what's going on. Yeah. When, I, when, I'm, I'm, when I'm telling people I'm calling auctions, they're like, man, but my market don't have those type of inventories that you have. So uh, unfortunately, I can't do it like you do it. So I already, already knew that I had to go to the bake, go back to the marketing basics. I knew RVM was popping, ringless voicemail, uh, text blasting, cold calling. Um, and I know a lot of people was doing um, Facebook ads too. So what I did, I went back to basics, man. I just started, I, I, I implemented some ringless voicemail campaigns, text blasts, and I just started crushing it since, you know, scooping up deals that way, um, belly to belly, yeah. uh, direct to seller type leads, and, and I've been having stopped since. So, and I still, I still pick up maybe about one auction deal a month. Okay. It's not, it's, I still take it as, as a free lead because I'm not putting up any marketing, but yeah. um, it's not like it, it was. Um, three or four years ago. That's, that's amazing. So let's just, let's just wrap up this auction talk because I, I haven't heard anybody in years talk about it. I got it. I know I got several deals like 2010, 11, just off auction sites, actually bought a multifamily yep. off auction site <clears throat> once. Um, so HubZoo and home search, right? Those are the two sites or no auction.com. Yep. And well, back then it was called home search, but now it's called zoom X O M E. One more time. What was that? X um, X yeah X O M like Mary E dot com. Ah, I haven't seen that one. Okay, all right. So oh, let's just talk about the game. So you go to an auction site, just any of them. You bid on something. Uh, how do you, are you technically wholesaling or doing a double close? I just want people to see kind of the intricacies of an auction site. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Yeah, so you have to take time to these properties. And, yeah. Um, in other words, you have to double close. So you yeah. need some type of funding, whether it's your cash or you're using transactional funding or mm -hmm. private funds. So yeah, you do have to double close. That's a great question. Okay. But again, you're, yeah. you're you know, you, and, and this is all in Virginia. Are we talking Richmond or everywhere in Virginia? Um, just the Hampton Roads area. I don't okay. know if you're familiar with the Hampton Roads, like Virginia Beach, all yep. the way up to like Williamsburg type areas. Okay. All right. So, um, is that how, is that how they disposition most of their properties or do they still do the courthouse steps? I know some counties are 50% courthouse steps, 50% online. Have they transitioned all online? No, not yet. Um, they always have the court, the court step auctions. Okay. And any, even if you go to these websites, you have to filter it. They have a filter button. You have an yeah. online filter or you have the live auction. So you yeah. can see, you go to the live auction, you see the ones that have that's dated for the court steps. Yeah. So if you click on online auction, then obviously those are all the online auctions. And, and what's the difference between the two is the online auctions are already foreclosed, already bank on properties. Yep. 
versus the court steps, they're pre-foreclosures. So um, right. that's why I was loving the online offers. They was already foreclosed, already bank owned. Therefore, yeah. I can get a special warranty, warranty yeah. to get closing. They already cleaned Easy up. You don't have any of those extra hidden uh, title issues. Uh, makes makes yeah. total sense. So uh, pr- pretty awesome. The other thing I know I want to go, go back to is early in the conversation, you talked about living in Orlando and you're doing all this in Virginia. Um, yeah. Obviously, you're from Virginia and you had that head start, boots on the ground, all of that. But were you mm-hmm. always in Orlando, like way back in 2011 or nine when you started? Or did you start in Virginia and move to Orlando for the, for the weather? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely moved for the weather. Um, I just got tired. I mean, I'm born and raised in Virginia. It's not much there. It's great real estate there, by the way, but not other than that, it's really not much, much there. Was, um, so I moved in, I moved here in Florida. In 2012, Orlando, been here ever since. Um, so that's like, what, 8,000, so it's going on eight years. Um, so in 2009 to 2000, I guess 12, beginning 2000, April 2012, I was just, you know, just in the, in the, in the uh, basically in the field, just learning the business, going, I mean, I remember my first year, um, I see my first year and a half, Michael, I was going to every appointment I can make. I was not running comps. I was not vetting the seller. No, I was, I mean, I was driving 30, 40 minutes just, and just to hear a no, <laughs> but I was learning. I was picking up so fast. And at the yeah. same time, my, 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 my vehicle at the time was like a mobile university. I had Greg Pinio going on. I had Ron Grant going on, yeah. I had Larry Goins going on all the, all these OGs in the game. I mean, that's all I was listening to. And yeah. Coming from a music background, uh, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, I, as I look back, I kind of wild myself because, I mean, I love my music. I love music. So for me to not have any music, yeah. like the first, I would say at least the first two years, just, just listening to, to just, I had a C, I had CDs. That's yeah. back when CDs was at its last <laughs> thing, man. Like, you know, I mean, people, they, and, <laughs> At, at, at the event, at the seminar, they were selling their providers full of CDs. Yeah, ninety seven yeah. or five ninety seven, like that. That's that's out the window now. But the <laughs> game's changed, man. The game has changed. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Now, now people are going to call you an OG talking about CDs. Some people watching this right now are going, "What's a CD?" <laughs> right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Oh, that is so funny. Uh, so the next thing I want to do in in your story is talk about the evolution. You have evolved yeah. from somebody who was solely focused on what I call active income to yep. someone who now appreciates active income, but is looking to uh, create cash flow, depreciation, you know, all these other wonderful things that real estate provides. When, you know, what, I, I guess I'm always curious, what sparked it, right? Was it when you filed your taxes one time or was it when you bumped into somebody who was a, <laughs> a millionaire in overalls? I mean, was there an event that kind of goes, man, I'm doing this all wrong? Well, I would say one of my taxes. <laughs> I was like, and, and at the time, I would say, I would say 2013, I was just like, damn, like that, I got to pay Uncle Sam this much. And it, it's just... I didn't want to do it. I had to, I had to, I I didn't want to do it. And I had, I mean, when you're in the game as, as we in the game, you meet all types of investors, you know, from maybe a real, or you just networking at a a bar or just networking in general, seminar, whatever Mm -hmm. you meet all types of investors. And I'm always hearing, I kept hearing the same thing with the the buy and hold people. Like, you know, you get way more tax advantages and, um, um, they just, just, just the, their lifestyle was a lot, seemed, seemed a lot more smoother yeah. around the edges yeah, lower key. and yep. lower key. And they, their pace, the way it seemed like the pace. And when you're around the buying hole guys, the pace, you can tell their pace <laughs> is a lot more stress free. That's that, my head on the coffin oh, there is the you, pace, man. Yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> Cause I can go to a RIA. And you, it's like the wholesalers, they vibrate at a different level, right? They're like always <laughs> on and they're like, cause they got to get that deal, right? They got to feed the machine. They got to go. They gotta go. <laughs> then you see the flippers, yeah. right? They're a little, little lower, but they're still vibrating and they're always worried about cash and, and all of that. Then you got the buy and hold guys are just sitting down, you know, overalls Chilling. or a hoodie or whatever going, I, I'm good. You know, Oh, I'll pass yeah, on that. Yeah. I'll pass on that. Oh, I'll take that one. It, it, it's, yep. it's just funny to watch, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got it right. It's about right. I mean, just the pace and a lot more stress-free. 
And I mean, the key to buying holding for the people that's trying to make that leap, uh, like I did, I think it was 2013, I took that leap. And I, I, again, I still started late and I, I dipped my toe in from like, from a, just a couple of years of buying and holding I shouldn't have. But the key is having the money. He or she who has access to the cheapest money, if not your own cash, but the cheapest money, yeah. you're going to, I mean, you're going to rack up with, with, with deals. All, I mean, if you got the cheap money, now you got to find those good deals. Um, they usually come to you because all you got to do is raise your hand yep. at some type of event. And then wholesalers and all types of people, those, even Asians will start sending you deals and you just got to sift through them and you cherry pick them, like I said. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so I'm curious, as we sit here today, you know, early parts of 2020, I guess I'll call it a portfolio. What, what's your portfolio look like today? You know, are, are you a residential guy, meaning fourplexes and below? Are you a multifamily guy, you know, only 50 units and above? Are you a little bit of mix? What, what's it look for Antonio? Yeah, yeah. So right now I'm a residential guy. Um, my, my properties consist of, and I, again, I share some of my numbers and the type of properties and the, the ROIs I'm getting on my, on my deals. And this is yeah. not every market by far. But I mean, I'm 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 buying thirty thousand dollars properties on average and getting eight hundred dollars a month. No work. I'm not doing. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's just I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed to to, to be able to. Yesterday, literally, uh, <clears throat> I had, and this is the. I'm not trying to segue too much, but getting a little excited about it. But branding on social media is by far like that is so important for for even for the people that don't think uh, that you know, for the, I guess, say the older people per se, that they kind of like, you know, just kind of bypass the social media. Maybe they just have a profile pic and just have friends and the rest of their stuff is private. It, that, that, I'm telling you, social media is so important for your business. It's, I can't even, I can't even stress that, but I'm going, but yesterday I had just off, you know, somebody who been following me in my brand, I had somebody who sent me a deal in my market, Portsmouth, Virginia, for twenty two five, like I'm gonna get eight seventy five a month. Like it was wow. the wholesaler has been following me. I think this is gonna be his first or second deal. It's like, hey man, I just, I just been following you. I got this property in the contract, and I, have, I mean, luckily I opened up the deal and saw it. It was kind of like an archive section, huh. and he was like, hey, I, I got this property for twenty two five. Uh, I got somebody else going out to it there today, but I would love to sell you this deal, man. I've been following you. And I look at it, I look at the address, I knew the area. I'm like, oh, I said, yeah, I just yeah. sight unseen. I mean, I'll take it. even if it's in the worst, worst shape. So I, 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 I gave him my assistant information. Uh, he didn't even know how to write up an assignment. Uh. So, yeah, so yeah, I think it was one of those situations. I had my assistant, you know, handle all that stuff for him. And I got a contract yesterday for 22.5 just based off social media, but I'm going to get 875 a month. There you go. You know, I mean, that's, that's the type of numbers I have in my market. And um, I'm, I'm, I've been in the residential game. I have thought about, I've been around, I'm around a lot of multifamily guys that's digging in my brain all day yeah. about after, after residential come to multifamily. Yeah. And on the flip side, I have, I know I have invet, um, <clears throat> mentors and close friend of mine that own 200, 250 single families. They said after multifamily and they have their justification wise. So you have both sides. I think I think it's up to you as an individual. Like, mm -hmm. which one do you want? You know, and everybody, the, everybody don't have my thirty thousand or twenty five thousand dollars, twenty two or twenty thousand dollars price points like that. I have to get what I get. Yeah. Um, most markets don't actually. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's pretty special right there. Two twenty two five eight seventy five rent. That's almost four x. You know, I know people are happy to get a 1% deal. That's, that's like 3.7 or something doing that on my head. So, uh, yep. that's pretty special. And again, in Virginia. Yeah. My best deal I got, my, my deal of, my deal of 2019, I bought a $10,000 condo off of text, by the way, guys, textmagic.com. Uh, 2000, I think I purchased this back in last September, 2019, bought it for 10 grand. I'm getting 805 a month, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> 805 a month uh it's, oh I, I will keep that one in forever man i just yeah <laughs> come I, on I, I don't even know what to say to that that's 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 yeah. that's uh, that doesn't suck uh that's that's no. pretty cool 
So uh, following you on Instagram, there's a couple of things you put out that I just think we need to hammer home for folks. One of them, uh, one of them you put out, yeah. is, you know, grinding harder is not the answer. Working smarter is. You want to kind of talk about that? I think that's yeah. a message people need to hear. Yeah, that's that's a great one, man. I, what I mean by that, and that's 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 how I was raised. That's where I come from. That's what I, that's what I was taught was to to work hard, work hard, grind hard. The harder you work, um, when I'm saying harder work, I'm talking about physically, like you know, physically, mm -hmm. manually doing it yourself. Yep. And and you know, and I know, Michael. You know, we've been in business business for a while now. I mean, there's only so much you can do as one man or one woman or one person. You can't do. I mean, you can't do it all. Yeah. So when I say gr grinding harder is not the answer, I'm talking about you doing it all. I mean, I, I get investors, uh, some, some, I mean, I don't mind flipping them deals, but when I see, I, I'll flip invest, an investor or a property for an example, right? A uh, cash buyer, a, a property. He may buy it more than my, my buyers that buy 10, 20 houses a, a, a month will, but he's that one buyer that will buy the property. He would go put his own roof up. He would go put his own windows up and he think he's making more money. He's getting you buy faster. But by the time he's finished that, the buyers that have contractors and have property managers and they, all they're doing is pretty much moving money around to buy properties. They're winning the game. Yeah. Um, and he's working a lot harder than the, the, the investors that understand just is really how you manage money um, to buy these properties and they're, they're utilizing contractors people that's that's good in their trade you know, as an investor you know people that buy know how to find the deals and, and manage that money correctly right versus trying to Try to, I mean, that's, that's a lot going on. So I, I think you want to work smart. You want to have a, you want to have teams, you want to have automations uh, and systems in place and allow you to scale up. And that's how you can start making more money and be a lot more stress-free. And um, buying and holding is one of them, actually. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Another one that you put out there that I really liked was if you wait until you're ready, you'll be waiting the rest of your life. Want to talk about that? Woo. I hear a lot of people say, um, I'll think about it or, you know, um, uh, I'll do it one day or someday. I hear that a lot, man. <laughs> just, just from, you know, people like just maybe say, um, people that follow me or if we just say if we're, we're doing a, somebody who wants to come to my coaching and we have them on a deep dive call to see if they're a best fit for the coach. And they're like, yeah, I don't have it now, but maybe one day I'll call you back. And when I, like those days do not exist during the week. One day someday oh, you gotta you have to come <laughs> that's good <laughs> you have to commit man and uh, most people for some reason and i get it i i relate to it i was i was there most people are afraid to commit they're afraid to commit so if you commit to something and say that you're gonna do it and even sometimes if you put it out on social media as like an accountability partner per yeah. se yeah you will get something done you will get that done because you don't want to look like a fool Oh yeah. Uh, I, I believe in that a bunch. I don't know if you've seen, but I put out a video every Sunday morning about my weekly goals, both health, family, yeah. business. I mean, I just, uh, here are my yeah. goals, here are my numbers. I track them weekly. I adjust them every 13 weeks and there's nothing like looking at the camera saying, guys, I missed it. Yeah. I, I messed up. Mm, uh, and that's then it's good. E that's equally good. important, like, Hey, I crushed it this week, you know? So it, it's really, really cool. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is actually over your left shoulder. Money never sleeps. Antonio, are you there? Oh, you broke up for a second. Hey. What, what was that, Michael? I'm sorry. So the next one and the last one I want to talk about is money never sleeps. It's over your left shoulder. Oh, it, 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 I mean, we call money currency for a reason because it's always, it's, it's always moving. It's flowing. Yeah. Yeah. And, a, and a current in, in, a, in a river is always moving. So money never sleeps. And I, it's funny because, you know, people are like, man, you know, uh, no, like I see hashtag no sleep. <laughs> like your body is made to sleep. You, you, need, <laughs> you need seven, eight, plus seven, eight, eight hours of oh, sleep. Yeah, for sure. But you want to make sure you set yourself up and, and, your, and your business is up where the money never sleeps. And yeah. It's passive income. 
cash flow, systems, automations. Systems and automations is going to create that that money never sleep uh, um, cash flow coming in for you. So every every day I wake up, I, I have to make money every day, like that, like every single day. And I'm not exaggerating. 365 days a year, I have to make money. Like that. That's that's my definition of money never sleep. And then, and, and my goal is to increase that, which is also cash flow by the way, because it's making money while I'm sleep. I want to increase that amount every day, whether it's from my, 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 my real estate business, my buying whole properties, or whether it's from my online business. So it's, it's, I have to make money every day. And that's, that's always a goal for me. That's awesome. Well, this has been so much fun, Antonio. I've loved every minute of this. We'll have to do it, <coughs> we'll have to do it again someday. Uh, how can people follow you? Because you put out so much good stuff. How, how, can, they, uh, how can they follow you? Yeah, so um, you can go to my YouTube. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Just type in Antonio Edwards Real, Real Estate. Uh, uh, if you're on IG, you're on Instagram, Antonio underscore, the letter J underscore Edwards. And uh, if you want a free book to learn more on how to you know, um, get into the real estate investing business, um, just go to AntonioEdwards.com. That is awesome. Uh, I and, love and it. Let, let, go ahead. Can I share a couple more things? Please, uh, go. That's, yeah, so... For those of you who might think of like RVM, uh, texting and all that. So here's what we use for texting. We use textmagic.com. For RVM, we use REI Rail. Uh, for cold calling, uh, we use 1,000 calls a day. So that's like the number, numer numeric. It's 1,000, calls a day.com. And that's their that's target. Each cold caller from that, from that service, they target 1,000 calls a day. So just do a number. Like if, you, if you can... If, if you have five cold calls in place, they will call up to 5,000 calls wow. a day. So imagine if you can get 5,000, this say, I'll, I'll keep it small. Imagine you can do 1,000 calls a day, one cold caller, how your life can change out there to getting leads for the most, he or she gets the most leads coming in. You can stumble and mess up. You're going to get a deal because it's all about how many leads you can get in. So I just want to share that with, with your, your following is, is, uh, uh, marketing is just essential and it's critical to your business. Oh, that's, that's all. I'm glad you did that. Thank you for that. Uh, any other yeah. last bit of uh, advice or anything? Uh, no, just guys, just go out there and get it. Uh, listen to Michael. He knows what he's doing. He, he's, he, he's that guy. He give out amazing content. And uh, I mean, flipping is great. Don't get me wrong. Wholesaling, fix and flipping. However you get the, the active income is great in real estate. However, buy you a <laughs> rental <laughs> like it, yeah you'll thank us later it, it's, yeah exactly it's, yeah so get your buy and hold property is it, it it seems slow at the beginning oh yeah um but you have to reverse engineer your thinking especially coming from a, a, a flipping mentality side it, it snowballs as you start to get deeper into the buy and hold side so just guys go out there and buy your rental um if you don't you don't i'm not telling you to stop flipping now you can do both Use your flip flip money to 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 investing to the rental rental business. So uh, that's one leaving with that. Oh, that's that's awesome, Antonio. Great advice. I appreciate you, man. You keep keep doing you and uh, keep having fun. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Thank you, Mike.